Box.com and we're hanging out with Sam, the drummer from Loxley. How's everything going? Going really good. So you guys are from Wisconsin. What's the reason the rest of the band can't be here today? Uh, it's Kai, our lead guitar player's sister's wedding on Saturday. So the other guys are out there, you know, getting ready for the wedding. I leave tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be great. Well, you guys came from Wisconsin and now you live in Brooklyn. How's the change? Uh, I mean, the change was a little while ago. It was interesting to say the least. Uh, we've all moved into an apartment, like one room, all together, a little crazy. Uh, we uh, have since moved to our own apartments and you know, split up a little bit, and it's much better now, I guess. You've also performed on an enormous amount of TV shows and been featured in a lot of magazines. What's the coolest experience that you've gotten so far in being the band? In being in the band. On TV? On TV or in magazines or just in general? Um, let's see here. Uh, Patrick Warburton was very cool when we played Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, him coming in, really funny guy. He's exactly like you see him on TV, just that complete dry sense of humor. Um, Kevin Nealon is a hilarious guy when we played Conan. Uh, got to meet him and you know he sends you to the floor laughing. So those are probably my, my two absolute favorites. So were you nervous on Jimmy Kimmel or Conan? Uh, Jimmy Kimmel, yeah. Um, it was definitely one of those. It was our first real TV performance and it was in front of a large crowd. Definitely one of those like you're not sure whether or not you're gonna drop a stick or they're gonna miss a line or. Yeah, very nerve-wracking. Conan was uh, a little more odd in the sense that they worked just so fast at NBC Studios over there that we loaded in at 8 a.m., hung around all day, just sat in the green room. They got us up on stage, and the next thing we know, we're loading out. I mean, it was, from the time we walked on stage to play to load out was maybe 10 minutes. And so we're out on the street, and we're going like, wait, what just, what just happened here? We yeah, I think we played a song. Did we play a song? I don't really remember. Well, ah, yeah, it was really fast, so. What's so intriguing about bands from that generation and that era? Uh, at least for me and like Beach Boys, it was specifically, that's my mom's favorite band of all time. So she had the records when I was a little kid and that was all that was around. So I put them on, you know, listen to uh, California Girls or uh, little Deuce Coop like over and over and over again dancing around the living room. So it, it's just something that kind of gets ingrained in your head as a little kid. Yeah. What do you think Jordan's brought to the band that wasn't there before? Uh, a renewed sense of fun. He, he definitely makes the live shows more energetic. Uh, and just a much pl more playful band off stage and when we're hanging out as friends and stuff. He definitely brings a good vibe. So. Your last album, Don't Make Me Wait, came out last year. How do you feel about the reception that it's received so far? I was ecstatic about it. I thought we had some great reception. And because of it, uh, MTV has kind of you know, said they really like us and want to help support us. And so we're doing the re-release of the record in September. And they're kind of putting their you know, muscle behind it. And you know, happy. <laughs> well, your songs have been featured in a couple commercials, movies. Actually, one of your songs, My Kind of Lover, was featured in Cloverfield. Have you seen it yet? Oh, yeah. Totally saw it. Yeah? Um, yeah, it was, uh, I went with Jesse and Jordan. Jordan had, Jesse had already seen him, but Jordan hadn't. And uh, when our song came on, you gotta stand up and go, that's me! You did? Was yeah. the audience filled? Was the crowd filled? Uh, it was about a week or two after it came out, so not really filled. But a week or two later, it turns out that friends of friends of mine are uh, like best college friends with Michael Stahl David, David Stahl, Stahl David, the, the lead from Cloverfield. And so um, we were at a bar and I turn around and like he's sitting right next to me. I just go, Michael, oh my God, I was in your, you, it does, never mind. I was just like the music behind you. You're way cooler than I am. Sorry, that was a little weird. And so we chatted all at night and it was fun. Did the placement in that movie show any growth for you guys? It's, it's a definite step forward that we're getting noticed by people out there and 
very flattering. You know. Any plans to record another album in the near future? We're in the middle of it. Uh, yeah. We've just been on the road with the Hives and Rooney all summer, so uh, we came back, took like a week break, and now there's the wedding. And uh, so when we get back, probably right before September, we're gonna finish working on that, and hopefully they'll come out next spring, summer, something like that. Jesse just had surgery on his vocal cords. How's he doing post-surgery? Recuperating. Uh, he had the surgery, I think, about 20 days ago. So there was like a week of no talking and a week of limited talking and exercise and just building up to being back to his normal self. So he has to write everything down? <laughs> yeah. I had surge I had my tonsils out uh, earlier in the summer and so I couldn't speak for like four or five days. So I had the dry erase board and the dry erase marker and I was sitting here trying to teach him like all the things of you gotta be kind of be preemptive in your conversations because you're constantly behind if you're talking to someone. You have to write everything down. It takes so much longer. But yeah, it, he completely ignored all of it. And he's on pen and paper. And he's not taking any of your advice. He never does. You guys have also opened for a lot of bands. Okay, go. We are scientists. Which band has been the most different than you had thought, or acted differently, as you were like, oh, they're gonna be so cool, or they really weren't. The Hives. The Hives. Um, I mean, they, they are such bluster and pomp when they're on stage. And off stage, they're just the nicest, quietest, funniest guys. And so much fun to be around. So, they're, I thought it was going to be very much a, like, you, 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 you stay over there. We're, we're the Hives, and you are the opener. You stay over there. And it turned out to be just kind of one big happy family. Any other plans in the near future? Uh, we're going to be doing a tour, uh, I think in October. October through November. It's going to be with MTV and their other Choose or Lose program. Um, I think we're going to be hitting all the major cities in the U.S. and playing some fun shows. Yeah. Don't make me wait, it's all right.